Codex menu rest. Oh wait, if we see all the recipes there, in the codex. Ah, ah. Oh shit, we can see everything here. Oh baby. Okay, we have work to do. <laughs> okay. Uh, can we fill this by class or something? No. All right. So there is two hundred and sixty-two tempering recipes, ladies and gentlemen. Each with like three to five individual stats. You gotta catch them all. All right. I mean, a lot of the stuff are probably like kind of repetitive. So we have like you know chance to cast twice. We have size. We have duration. We have extra damage for certain things. But let's see if there's like some crazy stuff you can see here. Twisting blades returns faster. Apparently, you can make it return before you attack. <laughs> so this returns faster doesn't actually mean faster, but it means it just cuts the time by a percent. And if you stack it enough, I guess it goes down to zero. Okay, chance for stuff to cast twice. Petrified duration. This is interesting. Elemental search. So you can literally put like flat. Like, if you do like a. You can actually make like a flat lucky hit rock build. Like, I was talking about the Rapid Fire Rogue. This is exactly what I'm gonna put on a Rapid Fire Rogue, actually. This goes perfectly with it. Lots of attack speed, lots of lucky hit. Boom. Okay, Storm Augments. Alright, what else? This trap stuff is really cool. Traps arm 0.5 seconds faster. It's actually insane. With a bit of master working, this goes to like 0 0.8, 1 second faster. It's basically instant. Cult of Duration is also very interesting because the longer they are in the cult drops, um, the more damage they take. Crazy Rage Duration could be very interesting here. Polarized Size. I wonder if this applies to the Shockwave. I, I hope it does. Rabies Duration could be interesting. Okay, here's Close, Distant, Crowd Controlled. All the rest stuff, so it's kind of nice. We can craft the rest wherever we need. Well, we can kind of craft it, I guess. We can re-roll it, and we can temper it. So you have more control now, which is kind of nice. Okay, here's a bunch of passives. That's kind of interesting. But they're mostly like supporting things. But it's kind of cool. I would like to see what other classes have here. Wolf's attack speed, Raven's attack speed. Raven's size, poison clipper duration. This movement stuff is going to be interesting. Because mobility cooldown reduction can also potentially apply to like charge. If charge is a mobility attack, you can get mobility cooldown reduction, brawling cooldown reduction, regular cooldown reduction. Although I did not see cooldown reduction as a stat anymore. So maybe that is kind of gone. Which makes Shaco really good now, I guess. Wait, let me see that real quick. Can we roll cooldown reduction still? There is cooldown reduction, okay. You can actually get a lot. Again, 8% is more than before. Okay. What about amulet? Is there cooldown reduction here? There's also cooldown, there's also 8. But they really nerfed resource cost, cost reduction. Like, resource cost reduction is down bad, man. But cooldown is better. That's interesting. Is there any other items where I can get cooldown? I don't think so. So it's the same as before. Plus the offense. What about offense? Uh, offense also has cooldown reduction, so you can you can get more than before. You can master work it higher than before, and you can stack these cooldown reductions from temporary affixes. Man, it's gonna be crazy. Okay, let's see more. Worldly stability. Resource generation, resource cost reduction, and resource cost reduction is like mega nerfed. But on, especially on weapons, it rolls really high. Yeah, so if you want to get resource cost reduction, it's going to be on your weapon. On the other slots, it doesn't seem like crazy. But you can put resource stuff now on your amulet. You can put resource aspects on your amulet. And there's also like energy per second, energy on kill, and this kind of stuff. So, in general, Visa Sustain will be much, much easier, I think. Will you do barrage build? Any bard build too? Yes, and yes. Thanks for sub. 18% three times greater affix CDR. Uh, yeah, we have to see how the greater affix... I don't know the formula exactly, how it works with cooldown. I was trying to like, reverse engineer the formula. 
about 18 sounds. Is that is that correct? Yeah, maybe it's correct actually. 18%. That would be kind of crazy. Okay, let's see some more stuff. So, chance of puncture cast twice. I kind of like this invigorating strike duration. Why didn't it do the same for blade shift? Why is there no blade shift duration? That would be cool. I really like blade shift as a skill. It's just too short. Wait, is that the same? Basic augments? Magic? Oh, wait. There's different rarities of this. They have higher values. Magic? Legendary? We have this already, right? Rare. Oh. You can find higher level recipes. Okay. Double swing size. Oh, shit. Whirlwind size. <laughs> Uh-oh. Any Legion Cyclone enjoyers in chat? Frenzy Duration? That is interesting. Okay. Yeah, I wonder if all of them have Magic and Rare and Legendary. Okay, Rent Size. That's kind of nice. Rupture Size. Okay. Flay Duration. Pressure Point and Exposed Vulnerability. Interesting, okay. Uh, this is the same stuff? Okay. Blood Augments. Oh, this is uh, Necro now. So he's gonna go through the entire list now, I guess. Hemorrhage Explosion Size. Blood Surge Nova Size. That's kinda nice. Blood Lens Duration. That is powerful. Ooh. This Blood Lens is very powerful. Okay, Bone. I think you saw that already. Chance the Bone Spin is to cast twice. I wonder if this applies to the minions now. Bone Spirit Explosion Size, that's cool. Bone Storm Duration is also cool. This is some, some good stuff here. Um, you had this already. Earth Augments. <laughs> double Boulder, Double Landslide. Dude, you're gonna get so many landslides, that's insane. If this applies to Trample Slide, oh man. Ah, look here, Elemental Surge is like a much lower value. So I think you can probably get this like starting from like level 50-ish or something. And then this is probably like, you know, probably like level 70, 80 range. And then like the, it goes up to 40k per proc on the legendary one. Okay, Frost Augments. Chance of Frostbolt to cast twice. Frozen Orb to cast twice. Oh man. Frozen Orb is going to be so big. <laughs> With all the conservation stuff. Blizzard size. That's kind of fun too. Furious. Bash cleaves for 95% damage. That's a fun stat. Hammer of the Ancient Size, Upheaval Size, and Kick Vulnerable Duration. 325% by the way. Wait, doesn't it make stuff vulnerable for 4 seconds? <laughs> okay. I'll take it. Firebolt. Oh, I'm really excited to try the Firewall Firebolt build. Incinerate size with the triple beam could be fun. I guess you can, if you can shotgun a thing incinerate, that will be fun. Meteor size, that's also good because you get more overlaps. Okay. Chance for dust devils to cast twice and dust devil size. Okay. They really like dust devils here. Alright. Shadow augments. Chance of Blight Projectiles to cast twice, Decompose, and Explosion Size, and Blight Size. Okay. Chance for Sever Projectiles to cast twice. I like that. I really like Sever, actually. Reap Duration. Yeah, not that useful. Okay. Shock Augments. Chance for Chain Lighting Projectiles to cast twice. Omni Power is back, kind of. Ball lightning as well. Teleport Nova size. I wonder if we're gonna get a Telestomp build now. There's like this new teleport upgrade in the skill tree that gives it like plus 500% damage. So I think it's gonna be legit, man. Like just like ultra teleport and teleport just kills everything. I think it's gonna be a build for like farming hell ties and stuff. Spark projectors cast twice. That could also be interesting for like some, some buffs and stuff that you can get. Okay, minion attack speed, chance for skeletal mage attack to cast twice. Oh man, wait. 
Can you do a double bone spear and double with mage? I wonder if that synergizes. <laughs> okay. Skeleton priest effect duration, that's cool. Trap augments. Okay, that's even better. We saw this earlier though. Wasteland. Ground stomp size. Leap slam size. Earthquake size. Earthquake duration. Man, these are some big numbers. Damn. And you get like a buff for every earthquake that's out, right? If you leap quake. I think leap quake is gonna be a real build now. Okay. Wear bear, we saw this. Wear wolf, okay. Arsenal. Damage with two handed bludgeoning, damage with two handed weapons. We have two dual wielded weapons. And damage when swapping weapons. I mean, there's two handed bludgeoning, and then there's two handed slashing. Uh, that could be the only one, but okay. Damage and swapping weapons, that's kind of big. Okay, Berserking. Damage while Berserking, damage while the Wrath of the Berserker is active. That's a lot. Damage while Warcry is active. Okay. Really big numbers here. That, that's a lot of Berserking damage. <laughs> okay. Blood attack speed, blood damage, blood overpower, blood and damage of fortified. Okay. Bone finesse. Okay, it's like always this category. So finesse is always like kind of like generic stuff. So there's a crit, crit damage, bone spur damage, 135%, by the way. All right. Time out, redeem. Easy. Okay. Got him. Uh, sorry, I'm not looking at chat too much. It's moving very fast, and we have like 300 affixes to go through still. Okay, companion, finesse. Companion damage, wolf's damage, poison creeper damage, raven's damage. Dude, that's a lot of poison creeper damage. I wonder if raven's gonna be kind of useful, but poison creeper could be useful. Alright, what do you have here? Conjuration damage, hydra damage, ice blades, lightning spear. We'll see, I guess, if Conservation is going to be a thing outside of Frozen Orb. Cutthroat. Ooh, that's a lot of attack speeds. Dude, Blade Shift, is this attack speed? Now the question is, is this going to be Category 1 or Category 2 attack speed? I kind of... I, I guess it's Category 1. So it won't be that useful. It needs to be Category 2, that would be good. Or maybe just lift the attack speed cap. That'd be kind of nice too. But this crit chance is nice. Six percent crit chance. That's kind of nice. It goes on weapons. Demolition. Is this um grenade stuff? No. Kick, charge, death blow, damage by iron maelstrom is active. <laughs> okay, I like that one. Dude, hundred eighty five thousand kick. By the way. But additive on Barb is generally not that crazy, I guess, because damage I'm working is something that you stack. Please don't scroll on all recipes now. Try to stop me. Okay. Earth. Lucky hit, crit, all power, boulder. Okay. Frost finesse, cold, vulnerable, damage to frozen, blizzard, and ice spike. That's a lot of ice spike damage. I wonder why they're buffing blizzard soak so much. Like, I like blizzard is already like such a powerful build, and now we have like the scaling with the weapons. We have like the highest number out of this stuff here, for example, on the frost finesse. Like, I think blizzard soak is gonna be ridiculous, man. Also, there's vulnerable damage, cold damage. There's like easy, like, look at how much cold damage this is. You can easily cap your Paragon nodes, Frigid Finesse and stuff, and uh, Frigid Fate, and the other one. Okay, Marksman Finesse, we saw this in the campfire. Marksman Crit Damage. 99% chance this Marksman Crit Damage will not work with Precision, but we'll see. <laughs> Rain of Arrows Damage, though, 150, look at that. Okay. If you get Rain of Arrows, cool is that Rain of Arrows cooldown reduction? If you can get Rain of Arrows cooldown reduction, that would be huge. I hope we can get that. But even just like the Master worked, like triple Master worked, greater affix, Rain of Arrows cooldown reduction, it's already gonna be something like fifty percent or more, maybe sixty percent less cooldown on Rain of Arrows. That could be huge. 
Okay, Profane Finesse. Damage to Cursed Enemies. Macabre Damage. Iron Maiden Damage. Corpse Tendril Damage. 300%. <laughs> Okay, it sounds like it can definitely be some funny stuff here. Even if it's not like your, your main nuke or something. Like with a number like this, you might be able to make call standards actually kill small stuff, for example. And you just walk. Okay, what else? Pyromancy. Fire damage, fire damage over time, pyromancy attack speed, pyromancy crit damage, and mastery damage. So funny enough, mastery would also apply to ball lightning and blizzard and stuff. Okay. Scoundrel. Damage to poison, damage to trapped, imbued and trapped damage. Shadow finesse. Shadow damage over time. Now I wonder, can I do this as a rogue? And we don't have shadow damage over time, I guess, so this is probably necro thing only. It doesn't say shadow damage, it's shadow damage over time and darkness. Desecrated ground damage and corpse explosion damage. Interesting that corpse explosion is in the shadow because there's a non shadow version of it. Shape shifting. Werewolf attack speed. Rabies damage 185%, by the way. Trample damage 185%. Werewolf crit. Werebear overpower damage. Okay, compared to all the other stuff, this werebear overpower seems ridiculously low. <laughs> But okay. Um, shock. Finesse. Lighting damage. Shock crit. Ooh, that is good. It's like shock crit is very good. Teleport damage. 200% by the way. Okay. Cracking energy damage. 105. That seems low, but we'll see. Damage per combo point spent. Chance for Rain of Arrows waves to cast twice. Oh shit. Stun grenade size, shadow clone duration, inner sight duration. Okay, that is that is really cool stuff. All of it. Okay, now we just need 22 combo points back. Log in. <laughs> okay, 40% chance of Rain of Arrows waves to cast twice. So, you can actually get... I wonder if you can get more than 100 and get a triple. But I guess it just caps out at 100. But you get four waves. Now you just need to get cooldown. I, I wonder if there's going to be cooldown anywhere. If there's cooldown for End of Arrows, it's going to be a thing. Give me cooldown, man. Okay, Storm Finesse. Storm damage. Hurricane damage, 185%. Yeah, I, I'm still going to make a Hurricane Druid, man. Storm Crit, okay. Summoning Finesse. Okay, a bunch of minion damage. Trickster finesse. Shadow step damage, 185%. Dash damage, 185%. Shadow clone damage. Oh, unfortunately, it's still bugged, I guess, in many ways. And stun grenade damage, okay. I'm not sure if you want to go for the stun grenade stuff. You're probably going to go for, like, the duration or the size or whatever and the procs. And go, like, full attack speed and these kind of things. But okay. You only have, like, a very powerful glyph for stun grenades. Variant Protection, Imposing Presence, Martial Vigor, Guttural Yell, and Defensive Stance. Okay, so it's like all of the defensive passives, basically, besides the Berserking one. Oh, you can get two. Dude, wait. You can get two to a passive baseline. So with Master, we can get to... Now, okay. You can't make a greater affix out of it, right? We can't get the 50% bonus on Temperate. But on, on the Amulet roll, you can get 3 ranks with a greater affix. So you can get to 9 ranks, maybe 10 ranks on a passive. Wait, is that real? That seems ridiculous. Like, I need to see this, actually. Is this some cap or something? Because it can get ridiculous amounts of passive ranks. Like, imagine like a rank 10 in Venom or something. That's ridiculous. Okay, Barbarian Recovery, Lunging, Strike, Healing. <laughs> Raid Leader, Invigorating Fury. Okay, kind of good stuff there. Barbarian Strategy. Ground Stomp, Cooldown Reduction. This is very powerful. There's also Ground Stomp, um... Size. And Ground Stomp, Cooldown Reduction. This is very good. And it's just a magic one. Wait a minute. 15%. Wait. 
I think it's reverse. This is legendary, 15%. This is magic of 20. <laughs> so it's reversed. Okay. Do 20% ground some cooldown reduction. And you can put this on like two or three slots, you can ground some like every five seconds. And ground some can reduce your ultimate cooldown. You don't need flicker stuff for that, you just ground stomp. Iron skin cooldown, challenging shout cooldown, steel grass cooldown. Okay, I kinda like this stuff, that's cool. Okay, blood endurance. Chance for emerge to form blood orbs. Ooh. That is very good. Blood of healing, blood misduration, blood mist cooldown. Okay. Frost Cage. Frost Nova cooldown. Oh man. Oh man, look at this. I need to time someone out again. Do we not have any mods here today? Unlucky. Okay. That is insane. This Frost Nova cooldown as well. It's like the ground something basically. Chill, slow potency, cold front. Okay. It could be like more than halfway down already. Let's go faster. Cycle and armor cooldown reduction. Nice, you can knock everything back now. Imagine how much you can grieve people. <laughs> okay, Earth and Bulwark cooldown, Cycle and Armor size. Oh man, not only can you knock them back more often, but you can knock them back further, man. Let's go. Thanks, Marcus, for the foremost. Earth and Bulwark duration, okay. Profane Cage, Blight, Slow Potency. That seems pretty useful. Corpse Tendrils Duration, that's a huge stun. Corpse Tendrils Size, oof. Wait, what? 40% size on the Corpse Tendrils? Are they serious? That's ridiculous. And Crippling Darkness Rings. Okay. Pyromancy, Chance to Heal, Flame Shield Duration, and Warmth. The Warmth is kinda cool. Concealment Cooldown Reduction, I like that one. Consumer Duration, yeah, whatever. Good for PvP though. And Agile. Oh man! You can get Agile ranks! Oh. Okay, so in the current game you can get something like 50 plus percent dodge or so. And if you have extra ranks to Agile, and you get like 4 ranks to Agile, each rank is, I think, 4% dodge, is another 16% dodge. You also have another 8% now from the affix. You can get like 60, 70% dodge or something, maybe more, with master working. You can probably get to like nearly 100% dodge. I wonder if there's a cap. There might, we might actually hit a cap. If, the, if there's no cap, we might hit 100%. <laughs> I mean, there is also an alternative way to get 100% dodge. Like, guaranteed, actually, currently in the game. But more, not later. Um, I mean, on PTR, by the way. Okay, Flurry Healing. Siphoning strikes and mending obscurity. Yeah, okay, whatever. That seems not very... I mean, the flurry might be nice. What is that? Blood Howl cooldown reduction. Debilitating raw cooldown reduction. That is powerful. Support Druid login. Debilitating raw duration as well. Yeah, you can easily make it permanent with this, I think. And nature's resolve. That's kind of nice. Okay, worldly endurance. Oh, look, you can master work... Uh, sorry, you can temper... Percent armor and dodge. Oh my god. <laughs> we just talked about the dodge. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try to make a hundred percent dodge work, man. <laughs> That's gonna be glorious. I wonder if there's a cap. Is there a cap? I'm gonna check in the details. But I don't wanna tap out now because we are somewhere far down. Okay, barbarian control. Steel Grass stuns for plus one seconds. Stun duration and concussion. Concussion is really powerful, actually. Daze control. Chance to daze for two seconds. Smoke grenade cooldown reduction. And smoke grenade duration. And they're both not very useful. But the chance to daze is really cool. Like, you can just throw this on, like, something. And you just daze stuff all the time. And you can proc uh, trigger attacks that way, for example. Or like the, uh, what is that, the, uh, the passive that reduces your evade cooldown. That's really nice. Okay, Thorns, Crowd Control Duration, and Barrier Generation. That's a very interesting combo. So I guess the Thorn builds like that. 
Okay, corpse explosion size. Wait, there's corpse tendril size again. We just had that. It exists twice. Curse duration, Iron Maiden size, Decurify size. That's cool stuff. Okay, Immobilize duration. Stun duration, Freeze duration, Frost Nova size. 40% man. 40% Frost Nova size. And there was 20% Frost Nova cooldown. Man. <laughs> Born army. Fawns are fortified. Percent. Minions inherit fawns. Skeletal warriors inherit fawns. Golems. Okay. Fawn a body. Fawns are fortified. Outburst and tough as nails. Okay. Worldly fortune. Up to 30% chance to slow, immobilize, stun, and freeze. Oh man. What? You can just roll this on your items now. Damn. That is really good. Guys, if you want to make a stagger build, <laughs> he's gonna throw all of these on the, on any build. Like, if you want to stagger any boss, you just walk in, you proc this stuff for like, you know, five seconds, and the guy is staggered. Like, that's it. Okay. That's insane. And if you like have all these effects, then you're also gonna proc all, like something all the time, basically. Okay, barbarian motion. Now it's getting interesting. Movement, movement, lunge, range. That's kind of funny. Leap cooldown and charge cooldown. Okay, that cooldown values are somewhat small, but I think it's enough. You can get this on boots. You can get this on amulets. You can masterwork it to. Probably almost 20% or close to like 18% or something. Alright. So we have 18, 18, and then let's say 15, 15, 15 or something. Or maybe 18 again. I think it was like around 18 that people said. So we have this on helm and emulate again. Oh, wait, I did a mistake. So you can reduce your charge cooldown to something like less than half, basically. If I'm somewhat right. And they nerf power charge to 6 seconds cooldown reduction, right? So I just need to get something like charge cooldown down to like... 14 seconds base... What's the base cooldown? 17. Yeah, okay. Power charge is a thing, guys. Charge is still a thing. And it won't even be that hard, I guess, as long as you masterwork the right stuff a little bit. But it's mostly going to be an endgame build, you know, guys. It's not going to be, like, crazy on the start. But permanent charge is still a build. Alright. So I wonder if this is, like, different for other classes. There's Barbarian Motion. Ah, here's Druid Motion. Let's see. Trample cooldown reduction. And Digital Grade Gate. <laughs> okay. Wait, why would you go digital digital great? Okay, wait a minute. Is there any reason to use this passive over just movement speed? No, right? The movement speed is just better. I think one rank on digital great gate is four percent. So it's just it's just worse than just movement speed. Okay. Necromancer Motion. Death's Approach. Ooh. Wait, can you, can a Necromancer tell me if you can still roll Death's Approach on an Amulet? But man, okay. But the thing is, the, the thing is it's the same, like, okay, wait, can you roll movement speed on boots? I need to check that real quick. Is that still a roll on boots? Yes, actually, it is. So can we temper the same thing? Can we temper an item that has a stat that they want? Let's try it. Oh my god. Evade cooldown reduction. I can press on skip. Yes, look! You can have double movement speed. Come back if you need rest. 
Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Wait, movement speed on Amulet? Is that still a thing? Yes. Okay, so everyone will always have movement speed cap in late game, basically. That's basically where we at. All right. That's pretty OP. Okay, tempering. Let's see, I'm profane. One army. Okay, here we are. Necromancer motion. We did that. Rogue motion. Movement speed from blade shift. Plus 80%. Man, why didn't they make a blade shift duration mod? Ah! This would be so nice. Okay. Movement speed for dark shard shadow. Shadow step duration. That's kind of nice. 60% shadow step duration. Okay. At least early games could be really nice. You just run around for like 3-4 seconds with movement speed cap after shadow step all the time. If you combine this with Ravager, you can do it basically permanently. Teleport cooldown reduction. Yeah. I wonder if we're gonna get Diablo 2 teleport, so they have to nerf this. <laughs> I think they have to nerf the teleport thing. Okay, agility. Agility cooldown reduction, shadow step cooldown reduction, cal drops. 25% cal drops cooldown reduction. Okay. Dash cooldown reduction. Brawling efficiency. Brawling cooldown reduction, kick cooldown reduction, war cry cooldown reduction. Okay. But here's also brawling. There's charge cooldown, there's brawling cooldown, there's normal cooldown. Okay, I think it's not even going to be that hard to make a perma charge barb anymore. PP is going to be wild. Yeah. Especially our damage reduction. Good luck. I think Melted Heart of Static is going to be a ridiculously good item now, actually. Because there's no... Like, you have insane resource recovery now. From, like, energy per second, resource generation, like, the new resource aspects. And you don't have any defensive stats, really, anywhere. There's only, like, res and armor. I've not seen any damage reduction so far. At all. There's only life. Is, is there any damage reduction? I haven't seen anything. Dude, 32% wolf cooldown reduction. What? <laughs> Not masterwork, nothing. Okay. <laughs> All right. Conservation efficiency, hide our resource cost reduction. Yeah, whatever. Ice blades cooldown, lightning spear cooldown. Okay, druid invigoration. Casting wrath skills restores the primary resource. Wait, what? Casting wrath skills restores 14 primary resource. Okay, but the, with Boulder, okay, it doesn't work with Boulder, right? Because Boulder becomes a core skill, but it may, like, with the new rules, it may keep the Wrath tag. If Boulder keeps the Wrath tag, this is kind of nuts. <laughs> okay, two to Abundance and two to Clarity. Uh, that seems like an oversight, because Clarity is no longer a resource passive. <laughs> that is a ridiculously powerful offensive passive now, especially for Hurricane build. Shadow Imbue lasts for plus two casts. And poison and cold. Oh my god, dude. Wait, this is a resource one. Why is this a resource? Wow. That that is amazing, dude. That is so good. And it can master work, so you can get six casts. <laughs> That is insane. I guess it's resource because of the Shadow Imbue. Whoa. Okay, that is the craziest I've seen so far. That is insane. Like, you can actually play, like, Inner Sight uh, Shadow Imbue build now or something. Like, you know, you don't, you're not limited to uh, mostly using common points. That is so... Like, man, Bursting Venoms! You just play, like, Bursting Venoms, TB... Inner side, and you just hold down right click, and it's gonna be like a thousand poison puddles. It's back. <laughs> okay. All right. Necromancer efficiency. Ultimate cooldown. 
Golem active cooldown, Bone Spirit cooldown, Rapid Ossification. That's, that's pretty good stuff here. The Golem active especially is uh, pretty high value. Okay, Necromancer, Invigoration. Bloodos restore essence, casting Macabre skills restores primary resource, casting ultimate skills restores primary resource. Yeah, okay. I guess Blood Wave has like the shortest cooldown. They could actually use that as like a essence battery. Okay, Rogue Invigorated Emission. Puncture resource generation, 65%. <laughs> Invigorating strike energy regeneration. Innovation and adrenaline rush. Okay. Adrenaline rush. Okay. Sorcerer stability. Invigorating conduits, frigid breeze, and fiery surge. So it's also resource stuff. It's all of the resource passives. Subterfuge efficiency. Trap cooldown, poison trap cooldown, dark shroud cooldown, subterfuge cooldown. Oh man. Like if all this cooldown stuff, you can actually stack a lot of like you can do like a Kaltos every two seconds or something. <laughs> like even without like Exposure. You don't even need exposure to play a trap build now properly. This also works for death trap and so on. That's pretty good. Ultimate efficiency, barbarian. Call of the Ancients cooldown reduction, 22%. Iron Melstone cooldown reduction. Wrath of the Berserker cooldown. Okay, that's kind of whatever. Okay. Ultimate efficiency, sorcerer. Deep Freeze cooldown, Inferno cooldown, 20%. That's kind of cool. Unstable Currents cooldown, that's also really cool. Weapon Attunement. Basic Resource Generation. Resource Generation with ding, 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 ding. Okay. Yeah, that's probably not really something too exciting. I wonder if it's going to be like, maybe for something like a Frenzy build, where like you kick and you Frenzy. Tier 4 Obol Spam gives 925 items. That's good. Uh, what is this here? Weapon Attunement. Okay, with resource generation while building a scythe, resource generation while building a shield. Oh, you can combine these. You can have both, I guess. Well, you don't, you don't really have to, I guess. If you have a scythe and a weapon slot and you have like one time of the affix anyway, so it's probably fine. Okay, Weapon Mastery Cooldown Reduction. Deathblow cooldown, Rupture cooldown, Seagrass cooldown. Support barb? Man, that's a lot of cooldown reduction. There's also the Seagrass weapon that gives you lots of ranks to Seagrass. You can have a, like every two or three seconds you can do a Seagrass or something. It's kind of nice. Worldly stability. Resource generation, resource cost reduction. And wrath efficiency. Hurricane cooldown reduction. Okay. Boulder cooldown reduction. Okay, whatever. Rabies cooldown reduction. Okay, this hurricane stuff. Oh man, I, I really need to make a hurricane druid, dude. Alright, I think that's all the affixes, guys. So there is some insane stuff. <laughs> Damn. Okay, this imbuement stuff is crazy. I'm really excited for that one. So what are some highlights here? So there's a bunch of like increased AoE things like corpse tendrils plus 40% AoE. Like Frost Nova, 40% AoE. Uh, Frost Nova cooldown reduction, Ground Storm cooldown reduction. Unfortunately, there's no Rain of Arrows cooldown reduction, man. I was hoping for that. But it's a Rain of Arrows chance to cast twice. Uh, what else is there? Like some crazy stuff. Lots of crit and attack speed for certain skills. Uh, lots of passives. Like some of these passives are nuts. Like for example, Agile. You can get two ranks to Agile. You can Master Work it to four ranks. You can get like 16% dodge there. You can get some 7% dodge here. You can get 7% dodge on the other rolls. You can make like a 100% dodge rogue, maybe. Um, percent armor exists, but no damage reduction. There's no damage reduction whatsoever. Doesn't exist. Anywhere. Um, you got chance to cast twice exists on a lot of skills. There's also one for Bone Spear and one for Skeletal Mages. So maybe they work together with the buffed Skeletal Mages. Um, double movement speed on boots works. I guess double cooldown for like, you know, a normal cooldown roll and like a ground stomp cooldown roll or a charge cooldown roll or something also works together, I guess. 
It seems like there's no restriction on what it can temper, even if you already have it. Okay. You can't reach 100 dodge, are you sure? <laughs> we'll find out. I mean, there's literally an aspect in the game now that gives you 100% dodge chance. So it just kind of sounds like there's no cap on dodge. And if there's no cap on dodge, then you can probably reach 100% dodge. I really like this elemental search stuff. Like, you can actually make, like, just a proc build now. You can put this, like, on three weapons. Or four weapons, if you have a barb. And you can just proc stuff. I guess barb doesn't have, like, much lucky hit. But it could be kind of interesting. This is really funny. But there's uh, six different types, right? So that's kind of hard to roll the right thing. It has uh, not, not too big of a range, actually. Uh, the range is okay. Check the dodge tooltip. Wait, did it add diminishing returns? Uh, okay, maybe you can't return 100%. But he can hit 100% with an aspect on Rogue. And he can do that so permanently. With the right setup. So. <laughs> okay, any other stuff that I missed here? Yeah, lots of interesting stuff for sure. That's gonna be fun. And it's also gonna make it so that, you know, you can actually make like... Kind of similar builds, but you can really specialize them in way different ways. And you can like, you know... Have like this way of moving around. Or this way, or you can like, have this way of recovering your cooldowns, and this way. And, uh, you know, you can scale different stats. It's really fun, actually. I think it's going to be very cool. You get to, need to get more of these recipes, though, before we actually make builds. D4 good, I guess.